One local man is taking a bad situation to make something good. Jaleel Stallings was the victim of police brutality during the protests after George Floyd's murder. But instead of harboring hate, he is finding a positive way to move forward. Aaron Hazanzada has his story. After the murder of George Floyd, I went out to protest police brutality. and was actually met with the same thing I was out there to protest. After going through my legal trials and then the subsequent three years, after that, I, I recognized a lot of different systemic flaws within our legal system and a lot of problems with the police department itself. And I was left with two options at that point was to just be bitter and distrust all police officers or to be the catalyst for the change I actually wanted to see. The change Jalil Stallings wanted is better relations between the police and the community. He believes most police officers are good, but there are some bad apples. Those few bad apples are spoiling the bunch for everyone else and, and destroying the public perception of policing. He started a nonprofit called Good Apples Initiative. The Good Apples focused on being a collaborative effort. I'm not trying to be the person with all the answers. I would much rather everybody in the community of different efforts come together and we can talk about the problems and come up with common actionable solutions that actually work for everyone. We are an organization that's focused on changing the culture of policing and justice in Minnesota. It's also a resource hub for communities and a place for law enforcement to help solve problems with systemic flaws that he says still exist, bridging the relationship between law enforcement and communities that they serve. Jalil served in the Army for almost four years and believes in law and order, but says we still have a long way to go. The nonprofit is his way of turning his bad situation into something good. I use it as my motivation, my motivation to do the work and make the change and stick out, regardless of how long it takes or how much effort I need to put in. If you consider yourself a good apple in and of itself, you are welcome to the table. Food brings people together. It represents our cultures and is often a core part of our identities as it's passed down through generations. Now, St. John's University is bringing culturally inspired menus to its dining services. Our Derek James shows us how they are getting help from celebrity chefs to expose students to cuisine and communities around the world. Celebrity chef Yia Vang. Oh man, I am really back in college. I feel old though. Is back in a university dining hall. A first time visit to St. John's University. Walking on this campus, all my college memories came back. One strong memory features the most basic of ingredients, food. We had this house, we had this ring -a ding grill that we found on the side of the road at somebody's house, and we would grill chicken. And friends. We would have a few of the guys just come over. But right away, we had this heart where we wanted to build community around food. And for me, that's that really started in college. Food is like music in that you don't need to be able to speak the same language to be able to enjoy it with someone who doesn't speak the same language as you. That was Tony Finistead's thinking when he asked his good friend to bring the stories, food, and flavors of Union Monk Kitchen to St. John's after taking over the dining program three months ago. I want our food to have a little more energy and a little more life and reflect what's going on in the world around us a little bit more than what we see right now. Students lined up for Bang's introductory course on Hmong cuisine. So we have this uh, lemongrass grilled chicken, and then it's going to be over some jasmine rice. We have a cucumber salad, and then we also have our quetzal, which will go right over that, which is going to give it a little heat, but, you know, with this weather, it's perfect. Pretty good. Yeah, the seasoning's pretty good. I've never I've never tried Hmong foods before, so I think it's good. Yeah. My first few bites have been amazing. St. John's students say they appreciate the opportunity to explore through food. I feel like it's a good way to experience all the culture in Minnesota, and I know there's a bunch of people who come from different cultures, and I feel like it's a good switch up from food, you know. The young diners, they're always asking that question of like, well, why am I eating this? Where does this come from? You know, it's kind of that origin story, and I think that that curiosity makes the food taste better, and you, have the, you understand the spirit of the food. The idea is to drive a ton of excitement around this so we can do more of these moving forward. Today's celebrity takeover by Chef Fang is the first of three. Later this month, Chef Pedro Wolcott will be on campus serving Latin and Caribbean food. Next month, Chef Gustavo Romero will serve Mexican dishes as they continue sharing culture through food. At St. John's University campus in Collegeville, Derek James, WCCO News. The city of Bloomington unveiled a new program aimed at tackling the mental health crisis. Our Kirsten Mitchell explains why the city thinks that this could be the model for other cities moving forward. 
When there's a mental health crisis, the call often goes to 911. I've long believed whenever possible, police officers should not be responding to nonviolent mental health calls. But Bloomington police have responded to many. Last year, more than 1,100 calls. This year, a similar story. These folks need immediate therapy. But unfortunately, uh, that immediate therapy is rare, rarely available. Uh, a lot of the wait times uh, exceed two months. A new program aims to change that. With the addition of two licensed counselors and a team of four students completing clinical practice requirements, they'll provide free therapy sessions to those who are referred by law enforcement or schools. When you can remove barriers like, like traveling, the heat of the moment help that's needed, um, time, money, that's, that's only going to help our students be in school uh, to learn. This pilot program is set to begin this December. It'll cost $63,000 and be paid for by the state's opioid settlements, as well as money from the state's public safety aid fund. This program is different, but different is what we need if we're going to be more responsive and effective in how we deal with the human debris field left in the wake of unapologetic profiteers. In Bloomington, Kirsten Mitchell, WCCO News. A new home for animals in need. How the Minnesota Zoo stepped up to care for these baby otters.